Hello, hello everyone. I am Francesco Giudici. I'm a software developer at Red Hat. And I'm also uh, a team member of the Network Manager project. Have you ever stopped a while thinking what kind of information people might leak when they connect to a free Wi-Fi network that could still run? I, I did. I did, and in order to really understand what this information could be, I got a trip to the mall. I usually go with my wife, and that time, since uh, I knew that there would have been a free Wi-Fi network, I brought there my laptop. The first thing I did there was to turn my Wi-Fi device into monitor mode. This means that it will be able to capture uh, all the frames that will be there without the need to be associated to any network, all the frames that will flow in the air, and also it will be able to show me managing frames, which basically are used to discover where it's network nearby and perform the association to the Wi-Fi network. When, when I was there, basically, after putting it in one remote, I started Wireshark to do a capture of all the frames. I left uh, my laptop running for 10 minutes. Then I shut it off and went with my wife in shopping because I care about Wi-Fi privacy, but uh, I'm more concerned to not make her upset. <laughs> so here are the capture. Uh, roughly, I captured 45,000 frames. They are not that much. And I started looking what was there that could help to identify me as a person or help to track people. I don't really needed uh, to see the capture to understand that the very first thing that I have to take care of is the MAC address. We know that each Wi-Fi device is assigned a, a MAC address in the factory. This is called a burning MAC address. And this is unique in the world. So this could be a really sensitive if we leak this uh, or try to connect to a Wi-Fi network. But where we find, where we leak, or where we expose our MAC address? Well, as we said, in every frame that is transmitted. So you will always see it in the air. But what could be not trivial to understand is that it could be also leaked when you are not connected to a Wi-Fi network. As we have uh, briefly introduced, there are some management frames which are called probe requests that a uh, device Wi-Fi needs to send out to discover if there is some access point nearby. And this will contain the MAC um, address too. So what can you do to, to deal with this? You can switch off Wi-Fi. That's trivial. But of course, this could not be the best solution. You could just randomize it. And so, how could you do that in Network Manager? First of all, you will be very happy to know that Network Manager already does randomization of your MAC address for the probe request frame, so when scanning for other for nearby networks. So, one last problem to deal with. But from association and inward, you can control which kind of MAC address will be disclosed with the cloned MAC address property. And you have a bunch of values that you can put there. Of course, you can put there a custom MAC address, or you have some preset value that will determine the behavior of Network Manager for you. Namely, you can see preserve means don't touch a MAC address. Maybe you already took care of it with another external program, or you already changed it. And Network Manager will not do anything with that when enable the connection. You can ask instead to use the Bernadine MAC address. Of course, this is not for privacy, but maybe you have a good reason to have uh, a MAC address, to disclose your real MAC address maybe in a corporate Wi-Fi network. You can pick up a stable MAC address, which is basically this stable values that you will find in Network Manager configuration means to pick up a random value 
but that will be kept stable each time you activate that specific connection. This is good because you can randomize it while keeping a stable behavior. Or, of course, random. This means that each time you activate a connection, the MAC address will be changed. How do you change this? Well, the, the easiest way to change it is to use the Anum CLI uh, tool. It's as easy as writing Anum CLI, connection modify, your connection name, cloning MAC is the property you want to change, and a value that you choose. If one prefers instead graphical user interface, you can do that also with the NAM connection editor. You can fire it up. You will have just uh, a graphical user interface and you have to pick up the Wi-Fi tab there. There will be a cloned MAC address uh, field to fill. And you have a drop-down menu where you can pick up the presets or just click in and put your own MAC address. So, MAC address, it's not that a big deal. We have just to randomize it. Let's see what else is in our Wireshark capture. Probe request. Again, we said these are used to uh, discover nearby Wi-Fi networks. Here, it's our capture filter by probe request. It's around 10% of uh, the packets I collected there. And you can see that among all the probe requests, there are a few that contain a specific SSID. Well, guess what? If you kept broadcasting your Wi-Fi SSID, it will be easier to track you. Let's take one in particular to see what happens. I took this, I took this, I filtered by this uh, SSID all year. I anonymize it because I don't want to be legally sued. I don't know if it would be the case. SSID Lou something family. There is a station that is broadcasting this for all the 10 minutes. And we can see that that MAC address is changing, is randomized. It's trying to, to not be uh, tracked. But if we are able to, to see this broadcast uh, of the SSID, or this, on a specific SSID, we are able anyway to understand that that is the same user. What about NM? Well, network manager, by default, it will not put any SSID in probe requests. That's great. If you don't, trust me. Ask this guy. <laughs> what happens then after association? Once you are associated to the, associated to the Wi-Fi network, you will have to get an IP address in order to communicate. So you will start the SCP request, and with the SCP request, request come the SCP options. And some could leak some some sensitive information. The first one, of course, is the HCP client identifier. This is a mandatory option. And as the HCP before specification states, the client identifier must be unique among the client identifier used on the subnet to which the client is attached. So the perfect value to use for tracking. Maybe it's even worse for the HCPv6 where the option, which has the same name, but it's a different option because it's for IPv6, carries a DCP unique identifier, DUID, which basically is meant to identify the host, not the particular DCP request that is sending out. So, and this is required to be permanent. So it means that an host that will use the HCPv6 for every connection, every interface you will use, it will send out always the same do it. And in order to differentiate uh, the HCP requests coming from the same host, maybe on different interfaces, on different connections, another option is used in, 
gate CPV6 uh, specification, where you put uh, uh, an identity association ID. And basically, uh, binding the DUID and the identity association ID, it allows you to, uh, to identify basically a single DSCP request. In order to make things more coherent, there is another specification that is RFC 4361 that try to convey to a more coherent uh, description of the client identifier. They suggest to use for the client identifier in TP before a combination of the DUID and of the identity association ID. So we said the, the DUID is unique per host. So what can we do with that? Also people, also people uh, dealing with the specification came up with this question and the solution was another specification. <laughs> RFC 7844. They told me it's called anonymity profiles for DHP clients. They basically told you, okay, if you need privacy, maybe the, the common standard don't, doesn't work for you. So if you want really to be an anonymous, use a profile where you use a random MAC address, as we already seen, and you base your DSCP client identifiers on that random MAC address. So we, you will not leak any, any particular sensitive information. Let's go to our capture. Let's see if we, if we look, just an, an example. Here, the client just puts this MAC address in, in the client identifier. There is nothing new than what he already is leaking with exposing his true MAC address. But what about network manager? Well, you can take care of the property DSCP client ID to out whatever you want there. Of course, you can put the custom value, or you can put Mac, the Mac label, basically it will allow you to use your current Mac address, and this is what mandates the anonymity uh, profile specification. Or you can have the permanent Mac address there, if you want to somehow, uh, you're in a corporate network and you want that your client could be identified by that. Stable, as usual, that stable identify, which is randomized, but it's kept uh, stable for the connection every time it is activated. Or you have also the option to pick up the recommendation for RFC 4361, where you have a combination of uh, the UID over the identity association ID. How do you change it? With MCLI. Easy. As the NMSI connection modifier, your connection, the property to change this time is IPv4 ESCP client ID. It could also be changed as a default by applying a network manager configuration file. And so uh, your default will be based, based on what you really want. If you know that you have a laptop and you always are around, you want maybe to have as a default to use the actual MAC address as the client identifier and you can change it. A bit similar for IPv6, the option in network manager is, is called DHCP DUID. You have multiple options here. Let's say that the one that you want to achieve privacy, LL. LL stands for link layer. And once again, means base your do it on the actual MAC address. This is, the, this is compliant to the anonymity profile uh, standard. The default instead will be to, uh, to, have, to, have, to pick up the do it from at least five if the connection has been already uh, started any time in the past. Otherwise, the default for network manager is to use uh, as for the main standard, a uh, DUID that it's permanent per host. So basically, you will revert your identity. 
You can change it as usual with MMCLI. The property is IPv6 DSCP do it. And also for this one, you can change the default configuration in Network Manager. Let's go back to our capture. What other DHCP options are there that could allow easily tracking? The host name option. Basically, here we see that the client discloses its brand and its type. It's Huawei P9 Lite. But what does Network Manager there? By default, it will send out uh, the host name DSCP option in every DSCP request, and uh, the fully qualified domain name option for DSCP v6, which is basically the same. It discloses basically the same uh, uh, thing, which is the, your system host name. So you have to be to be really aware of this, that if you want to achieve privacy, maybe you want to change this. And how can you, what can you do with that? Two options. You can drop those options from the DSCP request. They are not mandatory. And you can just change the ep 4 and pv 6 DHCP send host name to know it's just a Boolean. By default, it's yes. Or of course, you can just put there whichever host name you want that will be used just for that connection. And the options are called IPv4 or IPv6 DHCP host name. So, if you see me around, <laughs> and you spot me on the mall, what are you going to do? <coughs> Don't do this, please. <laughs> there, is, there is a less brutal option, <laughs> and would be to enforce privacy with network manager. Let's recap a bit. First of all, be sure that your MAC address is randomized. Then, you have to be sure that but the client ID for DCP v4 and DCP v6 will be Mac based. And remember, don't send any hosting out. If you want a default configuration that is targeted for anonymization, you could find it in the Network Manager upstream repository under the directory examples and then configuration.d. There is this. 30anon.conf configuration snippet that you can change a bit and just drop in your network manager configuration directory and you will almost all set. It will cover point 0.1, 2 and 3 but it will not be able to cover point 0.4 so you will have any way to remember to disable sending out your host name. And that's it. Questions? Yes, please. Does Network Manager have any notion of the trusted and untrusted networks? And you could say, apply these settings to untrusted networks, but for the trusted networks, I may want to have a stable MAC address. So the question is, does Network Manager have any notion about a trusted or untrusted network? The answer is no. It's something we, we are working on. We want to make all this process more, much more easier. Ideally, we want to apply a security, the security profile with one liner. Say, I want this, this, this network secure, and all this stuff will be applied. But we're working with it, not yet. Great. Yes, please. Uh, what are the implications with like, management frame encryption and PMF? Does that help at all? So the question is, what are the implications with uh, protecting management frames? Yeah, like some of the new features. Yeah. Wi -Fi a new feature, feature from Wi-Fi. Well, the MAC address will be anyway disclosed, so that will happen. Yes, it will be, it will allow a bit maybe to, to be protected by uh, people like me just sniffing in the air, but if a people is able to associate to the network, it will anyway receive the broadcast, so it will be able anyway to see all the DHCP options that you will have in the requests. Another question? Um, do you run into problems with uh, Wi-Fi chips that have a MAC address filter in hardware or in firmware? 
if you are not going to use your real MAC address as my last name for request, and if you, if you run into problems with association. So. The question is, uh, did you add any problem you, with association if you randomize your MAC address with Wi-Fi chipset that may have some filters about the MAC address use it? The question is, yes, legacy driver will have these problems. And for this, for this kind of drivers, you may want to disable the uh, network randomization during the scan. You could do that. I can show you, I guess. Do, do you have connection here? Oh, uh, uh, anyway, I, I, I would just. I just want to take the man page. I don't remember the name of the option. Anyway, it's easier. I don't want to disclose. And okay. Anyway, it will be. It will be easy. There is an option that you can configure in the network manager. Dot uh, conf main configuration file. And you can set uh, Wi-Fi scanning during randomization off just for a bunch of chipsets. That's that file that I, the, the directory where I pointed you about uh, the profile you can, not the profile, sorry, the configuration file that you can drop to change the behavior of anonymization and so on. It will contain also a snippet showing you how to disable the scanning for uh, uh, this kind of Wi-Fi drivers. Randomization during the scanning for this Wi-Fi driver. It could be also just for particular uh, drivers. Yeah, another question? Is it possible to randomize all your uh, last part of uh, the metaphors? So yeah. it will be appear as a regular device from a certain manufacturer and just the last part is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question is, is it possible to randomize just a part of the MAC address? Maybe to leave the AWI, the first, the first byte of the MAC address, to a fixed set in order that we can just appear as a particular device? The answer is yes. There are other properties that I have not shown you that allow to uh, configure in detail how MAC address randomization should happen. There is a, a subnet mask, not a subnet, sorry. Uh, a mask that you can apply and to 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 pick up just the bytes that you want to randomize and have some other fixed one. Yeah, another question. Not exactly practical, but do you have some side of other network managers and other operating systems do to meet the same goals? Sorry, can you repeat? I have to. Do other network managers and other operating systems like Android? Oh, what they do? Yeah, what sure. Kind of they have to do to the yeah. Great. Yeah. The question is, uh, do you have any insight of what other operating system do which do not use a network manager? Yeah. The answer is, yeah, I know that there is the scanning randomization is something that is applied by many devices, also mobile phones, Android and Apple, I guess, and. Also, not putting your SSD in probe request is something that everyone is starting to do because you need that just when you have an hidden wireless network. Why is it important to, why do you would need to put your SSD when doing a probe request or when scanning? If the network has a hidden SSD, it will not disclose it. You should come with a probe request to say, I'm looking for this network, so the access point will, will reply. And in order to achieve this, there should be the SSD there, and they have an option I saw in the latest Android release, for instance, that in the advanced properties of the Wi-Fi configuration, you can put, this is a, a hidden Wi-Fi network. We have the same also in uh, Network Manager. You can tweak it uh, on a connection base. So yes, I think every, OS is dealing with this, especially mobile phones are, uh, are, are picking this up. But as you see, I, I did the capture just a couple of weeks ago. There are a lot, really, of devices that doesn't do that. Uh, sorry, we are out of time. Please, if you have questions to uh, Francesco, we will ask you. Oh.